In this video, we're going to look at how to optimize the dimensions of a storage container. Here's the scenario. We have a rectangular storage container with an open top, so there's no lid, but there is a base down here. We have a target volume. In other words, we want to build a box of a certain size, 10 cubic meters, which is quite large. The length of its base has to be twice its width. That'll be an important constraint. And we also have something about cost. The material for the base is more expensive at $10 per square meter, whereas the sides are a little less expensive at $6 per square meter. Determine the cost of the material for the cheapest such container. And another option on this would be to find the dimensions of such a container. We are likely going to come up with that along the way as well. So again, remember what our goal is. Goal is to minimize the cost. And that means we need a function that is cost equals some function of the variables involved. Well, we don't have any defined for us, so it makes sense to put some in ourselves. One natural set of variables would be to use, say the short width here is W, and the height is H. And we are also told that the length of its base, this side here, is going to be twice its width. So in fact, we call this B as base, or we can go straight to what it actually equals, which is twice the width. With that in mind, we could choose W and H in principle to be whatever we liked, and then we would find the width of this side here is twice W. All right, so what's the cost made up of? Well, the cost is going to be made up of the base cost plus the side cost. And there's more sides, so sides cost. What is the base cost? Well, it's going to be a rectangle that is W by 2W, W times 2W. And if we look at units, that's going to be meters squared. That's the area of the base. And we're also told that the cost is $10 per square meter. So the units there would be dollars per meter squared. Multiply that out, we get a cost in dollars, which is perfect. Now the sides are a little more complicated. We have one, let's do this in a different color. We have one side in green here and a copy of it down here, which is W by H. So if we take width times height, that gives us that. We also have two of those. If we multiply those out, we get square meters. And we're told that the material for the sides costs $6 per square meter. So we have a six in there, which is the dollars per meter squared. And again, that gives us a cost in dollars. Of course, that's not all. We also have these long sides, two of them. Each of those is two W's by H. So the one side length is two W. The other side length that we multiply by is H. That gives us our meter squared but we have two of them. So there's another two for the duplication of those sides. And we have the six for the cost per square meter of each side panel. That is a major accomplishment in the problem. We now have a function that tells us if we knew what the width and the height were, what the total cost of this box would be. Now this form is nice because it shows the source of everything, but it's gonna be hard to work with. So let's expand this out, figure out all the actual values in each of these problems. This is two times two times six is 24. W times H is, and in fact, these are the same. So we actually have 20 W squared plus 36 W times H is. Then the units there would be dollars. The key to that is going to be this statement here. The volume of the container has to be 10 cubic meters. We're gonna bring that back to our dimensions here and that's gonna give us a way to relate W and H if we have that target volume. Quickly resketching our dimensions here. We know the total volume is going to equal the side lengths all multiplied together. The two W's, another W and an H. And we need or require that to equal 10 cubic meters. That's the same as saying two W squared times H equals 10. And notice how we can isolate H if we like. It seems easier 
the nice leading W, the 10 over 2 cancel, and we get H is 5 over W squared. And so our cost function, which is equal to 20 W squared plus 36 W's times H, we can now replace our height with this volume constraint value, and we end up with 36 W's, and then the H gets replaced with 5 over W squared. Keep going. We end up with 180 over W. We can write this as cost as a function of W. What do we have? We have a function that if you pick the width on the side, we immediately know this length, it's twice as big, and we also know the height because we have to have that target volume of 10 cubic meters, and then we can predict precisely from your choice of W to what the cost is. Notice in this question we don't have a very clear domain. We can say that W has to be greater than zero. It can't actually even equal zero in this case because to get a volume of 10, notice what would happen. We end up dividing by W to find our height. So we need W greater than zero. And it's also possible to have W be huge. And then you just end up with a really, really thin design. So that is going to be a challenge. Our only domain constraint really is that the width has to be positive. Well, with that in mind, let's take a look at the function and look for critical points. Those are going to be the points where the derivative of this function equals zero. So dc dw is what we're going to need, or c prime if you prefer. Notice the w's where they are. We're going to have 40w for the derivative of the first term. It helps to rewrite the second one, I think, because it makes it into an explicit power if we rewrite this w in the denominator as w to the negative 1. Let me get rid of this for a moment. This is the same function. We haven't taken the derivative yet. We've just rewritten the second term. Then when we go to take the derivative, we bring the power down front, and we get negative 180, w to the negative 2, and that we can rewrite in a more traditional format of 180 over w squared. Perfect. So that's the derivative. Then we set it equal to 0 for critical points. Let's do that in blue. The derivative is not always equal to zero, but we want to find the points where it is because that are, is going to be one of the candidate optimum points where the critical point is located or where the derivative equals zero. <clears throat> that means we need to solve for w at this point. We can reshuffle this to be 40w equals 180 over w squared positive now because we moved it to the right hand side. We bring the w up, we get w cubed is 180 over 40. That can be simplified down to 9 halves. And so w is equal to the cube root, we have w cubed here, of 9 halves. And for reference that's about 1.65. w is a length in meters. As an aside, remember that cube roots don't have plus or minuses. Square roots, there's two possible solutions, but cube roots, the sign comes along with it. If we take the cube root of a positive number, we get a positive number back. All right, we found our optimum value, or at least our critical point. We haven't shown that it's a perfect optimum yet. Our next step is to show that that critical point is in fact a global minimum for the cost. So thinking of a sign chart would help us here for the derivative. So let's build a straight line here. This is going to be w values and the sign of our derivative. Notice that we should start at zero, but only include points to the right of that. We don't care about this negative width area because we can't build a box with negative width. And we have the landmark point we found earlier, which was the cube root of nine halves. All right. So what happens when w is less than the cube root of 9 halves? Well, our derivative was 40w minus 180 over w squared. 
Again, you can put in real values into this to check. We know the sine will be the same all the way in here because the sine of the derivative is a zero exactly at this one point and nowhere else. So that means in this interval, it has to be always positive or always negative. If you plug in smaller values here, what you're gonna find is you get a negative sign. You could plug in 1.5, something like that. You're gonna get a negative value for the slope. And if you do the same thing for w's that are bigger than that threshold, cube root of nine halves, you're going to get a derivative that is positive. As w gets bigger, this term, the positive term gets larger and this gets smaller. So you'll have that. And what that means is you can do a quick sketch of the graph of C of W, the actual formula, the actual relationship between the costs and the length of the side W. With W on this axis, we're gonna have a point. We found out that was a critical point, so it had slope zero. And then we also found that from zero onwards, not including zero, because it's not in the domain, because we can't divide by zero, but everywhere past there, we'd have a decreasing function. There we go. Everywhere after that, we have an increasing function forever. The fact that we had this single critical point decreasing everywhere in the domain up to there and increasing on the domain everywhere after there means that w equals cube root of nine halves is going to be a global min for the cost. Perfect, that gives us the rationale. And now the only thing that remains to be done is to say, well, what is that cost and what are the dimensions? So the final result here, we'd have W equals around 1.65. The other side was two W's. That would be around 3.3 meters. The height would be approximately, we can't see it on this page, but if we go back a page, the height is going to be five divided by W squared. Five over W, which is approximately 1.8 meters. So our cost function, we we'll need a little bit more room here, our cost value at the optimum is going to be defined by our formula which was 40W, 20w squared minus 180 over w. That was our original function. And if we calculate that out using our width of 1.65 meters, we're going to cost, going to get a cost of approximately $163. That'll be the least expensive box that we can build that has the 10 cubic meter volume based on the particular cost that we use, the 10 meters squared for the base and the six meters squared for the sides. Again, notice the steps that we went through though. We first of all recognized what we were minimizing, cost. Then we built a function for the cost. It was almost right at the outset, but it had a variable extra that we couldn't work with. We needed to get it down to one variable. We used information in the problem to get rid of that variable. And after that, it was a classic optimization task of, you have a function, find its critical points, and analyze the function around the critical points to identify that it was a local minimum, or in this case here, actually a global minimum, and find the associated cost with that minimum.